My special guest in conversation this week, she's an actress, could have been a professional musician. Uh, she likes a Christmas film. She plays a mean game of football in goal, I'm led to believe. <laughs> she does family time on the west coast of Ireland. They're another acting dynasty. And when I say dynasty, there are a number of acting dynasties. This is another big acting dynasty. You'll probably remember her from Heartbeat, but she's done loads of things. In the West End, she was in The Curious Incident, which sort of it did so, so well. And she's back. This time at the Trafalgar studio. What a great cast, my goodness me. Together with Tom Hughes and Anthony Head in a, in a new piece, actually, for theatre. Neve Cusack, it's nice to see you. Lovely to see you. You're rehearsing you. at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, this is our second week of rehearsal. Um, and it's, it's a play called Ticking, um, which has been written by a really talented guy. He's a, called Paul Andrew Williams. He's a, he's a writer and a director, and, and this is his first play. He's done a number of films, yeah. and um, he's, he told me to tell you that he's a genius. So just, just so you know, he's a genius. That's fine. But um, uh, <laughs> he's... he's I think he's got he's a real storyteller. He really knows how to tell a good story. I've seen a couple of his films. He he did a film called Song for Marion mm. um uh with Gemma Arterton and Vanessa Redgrave yes. and um and he did uh, a, a wonderful film called London to Brighton which won a prize I think it was, won the Evening Standard Best Newcomer he is a genius he is a genius he is a genius and um and this play is about a family it's really about families and I, I think you re I certainly recognise elements of of family relationships yes. family dynamics in the play but it's a, a, a family put under a very um uh hard uh, microscope because uh, because the son has um, been tried an yeah. and charged for the murder of a prostitute in a foreign country and his f his parents have come over and he comes from a very sort of middle class um uh, you know a fine upstanding family his mm. father's uh, a captain of the cricket club um, and and it's it's really about about how they how these parents it's about the boy how he sort of what he makes of his family and what he makes of his parents and what they make of him and it's incredibly moving and <laughs> typically of Paul he manages to make it funny at times um, it's very sharp and it it's it's just over an hour long and it's a roller coaster you don't know whether wow. he did it we cram a lot in you cram a lot in um so you'll be on the edge of your seats i think i i i, I we did the first read through obviously last week hmm. and it was just so interesting hearing it read out i think i think the casting i mean i can't talk about myself but i think um tom is is fantastic he's very he plays simon which is the the character? Oh, he plays Simon, yeah. our son. Yes, well done. And um, he he is uh, he's very charismatic, um, and he's got he's got a lot of energy. And I, I think he'll be he'd be fantastic as Simon. And Anthony Head obviously needs no introduction. He's a wonderful mm. actor, very experienced actor, and and um, I think he's going to be brilliant as as my husband. And there's also another actor called David Michaels playing our lawyer. Um, so I think I think it'll be I'm really excited because I think what Paul is interested in is acting that isn't really like acting. He wants it to be really alive and really true. Mm. And and um he's he's a delight to work with. He's funny, he's relaxed, he's very encouraging and um it's 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 quite an adventure for me. Yeah. It is. It yeah. is an adventure. We should point out that Simon is facing a pos uh, possible execution by yes. a firing squad. Yes. So what you're dealing with here is somebody who's been found guilty of something. I don't want to ask you too much about it yeah. because I, I, I think it would spoil it. Yeah. But, it, but it's the relationship between the parents who are seeing their son who are trying to come to terms with this. This is not an unusual case. I've seen, We've had cases in the papers of, uh, of kids who've been caught smuggling drugs. Yeah. They're in, languishing in foreign jails. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've told my hand up and say, if you're caught smuggling drugs, I think you're a bit of a fool yeah. to go to, through a country that has zero tolerance. In this particular yeah. case, this is a murder, but you're so far away. And parents, and this is obviously a nice middle-class family, yeah. they're coming to terms with something which could end up 
in the death of their son. I mean, you have to put yourself in that position. It's unimaginable. Unimaginable yeah. completely. Yeah. Because and you it, don't it, know what, what to do about it. Your hands yeah. are tied. You're dealing with people that probably don't speak the same language. Yeah. You're dealing with all sorts of problems. Yeah. And nobody yeah. cares. No, I mean it's if, even for the lawyer, you know that he's he's been here before, so it's it, it it's very different. It just it the the, the stakes are, are couldn't be higher. The stakes couldn't be higher, and it's just how does a family deal with that? And um, uh, yeah, I think you really. It, it, I mean, it's a nightmare situation, and it feels nightmarish, mm. and because it's being um, put on at the Trafalgar Studios, the smaller studio. Yeah. You know, it very all intimate. takes place. It's very, very intimate. Yes. It all takes place in um, in a in the prison cell, and literally, I think the audience are going to feel like they're in the cell alongside us. They're going to see the sweat, smell the sweat. You know, I mm. think uh, I th- I think it'll be a real experience. Yes, I've, I've spoken to people who've worked the uh, the Trafalgar before, and they say they like it for the simple reason that it's it's like television. Yeah, it's you're there. Yeah, it's there. You're very close to it. There's not that proscenium arch and yeah, separated yeah. which yeah. you've had before. Yeah, this is actually so close. You're right. You can see the sweat, and people watch it even more closely than they would if they were in a big theatre. In a big theatre, you're sharing the experience with yeah. you know maybe a thousand people. Yeah, but the Trafalgar, you're not. I mean, it's it's quite difficult for actors to work it. If, if you haven't, I think it's a challenge. Up, yeah, yeah it, it is a challenge. But I think, I mean, one of the reasons I've loved theatre and in, 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 in a way that I don't love the other mediums is, is that it's immediate, it's alive in front of you. And that's sort of um, magnified, if you like, when, you've, when, when it's a really small space. I mean, to be honest, when I go to the theatre, I try and get tickets, I try and get seats that are close to the, to the stage because I really do love seeing the trickle of sweat, the glisten in the eye, whatever it is. Well, you're quite be- mercenary, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I, I think, you know, I think something happening in front of you, I mean, theatre is extraordinary and it should live on because there is something about the people being there in front of you and you know that you know, last night's performance wasn't the same as tonight's performance. You know that the audience, ma- the audience that are there that night make the difference. Mm. So, you know, some people will laugh at certain things and some people won't. And that will completely change how the story goes. Not not in terms of the the basic narrative, but the, the, the different colours. And to feel that you witness something. I mean, I, I always think it's a bit like, you know, witnessing a, a, a wedding or, you know, there's something very, very private, special, shared and intimate, particularly if you're in a small space, mm. about theatre. So I, I, I think, and I think this play is absolutely theatrical. I think, you know, you could do a different telling of the story on film or on television, but for it, you know, the hour is good, you know, the hour, we've got an hour to see our son and the, the play will be between an hour and 15 minutes, but an hour is what we're allowed so you feel that pressure of time. The audience will feel that pressure of time. Mm. And, um, and all the big things have to be said or want to be said. They may not be able to be said because we're not the most, you know, we have problems with our communication, as many families do. Um, so I, I think people will get different things from it. Some people will recognise certain things really clearly. Some people would just find it entertaining and, and a bit thrilling, I hope. Mm. Um, but that's but, what theatre is supposed to provide. Yeah. I think theatre is supposed to provide not just an outlet for you to show us what you can do, but for us to immerse ourselves in you as the character. Yeah. That's what we want to know. We want to know more about you. Yeah. But because we know you, we want to know even more. So it's, it's even more of a challenge if, yeah. you're, if you're well known through, through television to do something like people will go and see it because they know you, they know Anthony Head. Yeah. They, they're going to see established actors and they're hopefully going to come away with an experience which you've talked about and you've said is so amazing. Are we working real time? Yeah, we are. We're working, we are. right. Yeah. Okay. There's going to be a tiny, I think there's going to be a tiny bit of leeway in terms of obviously we're not going to be watching the clock, but right. it, Paul has written an hour's play. Right. So, yeah, we are talking real time. I love it. I'm, I'm excited already by it, but you're only in the rehearsal stage. So you haven't, have you learnt it yet? 
Uh, you I've still more book? or less, I've more or less learned it. Wow. For me, for me, that's an easier way of working. You know, actors, you know, different people work in different ways. Some people like to stay with the script for a while. It stops them making decisions too quickly. Yes. But for me, I find very often, you know, working with the other actor, I need to ha- not have my face in the script. I need to be seeing their eyes. And the reason I'm talking now is because you're listening to me. And uh, yes, you've noticed how captivated I'm just sitting here listening. <laughs> it's like, like having a private performance. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, you know, that that's what what communication is about, isn't yes. it? It's about the other person, actually. Yes. So um, I in in the for me, getting off the script as quickly as possible and being able to play it with the other person and see, you know, that'll colour how I how I put something. I may have to use the same words that Paul wrote, but I I will I will say them in a different way depending on how they're being received by the person opposite me. So that that's really interesting. And there's a lot of um uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, there's the. It, our, our son doesn't make it easy for us and we don't make it easy for each other so there's quite a lot to play with you know there's quite a lot of ducking and diving to do right. in order to to connect yes and because children don't speak to their parents when you're put in a situation where you have to speak to your parent it's very awkward we're yes. not we're not as communicative as we should be no i think i think the thing about him is about simon our son is that he's been in jail for 4 years and what he wants to say there is stuff that he really does want to say to us in case yes uh, this is his last moment you know his last moments with us yeah. um, and it and that again you know you, you you do that thing when we all do it when we're rehearsing you know you look back at things you might have wanted to say or things that you think maybe your kids would want to say um, so so you, you you know we're all delving into our own experience as well as what Paul has written I think Paul has absolutely looked at his own experience as well as stuff that he's observed with other people. So some some of it is is um, imagined, and I think some of it is probably stuff he's he's actually experienced. So um, it's it's a re- it's a it's a real pleasure to work on actually. Good. Yeah. All right. Listen. Very quick break. More from Neve Cusack after this. Special guest in conversation this week. She's going to be at the Trafalgar Studio. This is down uh, in Trafalgar Square here in London at the Whitehall Theatre. It's a studio space, which means it's not as big as you've got the theatre up above and then you're sort of down below. But it's it's very intimate, very, very intimate. And uh, in this piece, Ticking, as you've already heard, it's uh, mother and father and it's a son. Son, been, I didn't know he'd been in prison for four years. That, of course, makes it worse because I always think that when you put people in prison, they've been found guilty and you get this, this situation where they go right okay and you just sit there and languish while the lawyers argue it out the years go by but then it could end with an execution where they just like they they did in Bali a short while ago I think there's a grandmother on death row over there who smuggled 1.6 million pounds worth of cocaine in and she's been on death row now for I think about two years but they took other people out and they executed there were two Australians and a few other people and they shot them Bloody hell. And you think to yourself, I mean, I, I still can't believe in this day and age they still have beheadings in Saudi. They still yeah. execute people publicly. Yeah. We did it here, but we kind of grew out of that. Yeah. But yet in other countries around the world, and, and there's always been this, this argument with people, you know, do we have the right to take somebody's life if somebody makes a mistake or something happens? I don't know the, the extent of how, how Simon's murder of the prostitute came about. All we know is that mum and dad are there learning probably more about their son than they've ever learnt before in their life and yes. trying to fill in all the gaps and trying to make sure that they talk just in case the worst happens and then you lose somebody yes. completely and I don't know what that's like well n- nor nor do I thank god yes yeah, thank um, god but I, th- I I I mean I think I think the thing to remember is is that none of these three people is perfect no one is perfect mm. and 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 in fact their their lines of communication are, are, are highlighted as so imperfect because in this situation there are things they really miss and, and I think that's really well observed in the play um, it, and, and sometimes it's actually funny you know that, that people can't say the right thing that people say really really the wrong thing yes. uh, when, when, when in hindsight or you know when you're reading it you think would someone actually say it? and you think yeah that's actually what they yeah. would say because yeah. they're that kind of person so um I, I, I think uh, I think it's very identifiable. I think we will all recognise a bit of ourselves in there yeah. amongst one of the three of them. I was thinking a short while. My mother died a few years 
back and she was dying. She had terminal cancer. But you don't know what to say to somebody. I know it sounds really ridiculous. It's your yeah. mother. Yeah. And we, because we don't communicate and, they, and, and the nurses go, well, just talk to her. She can hear you. Yeah. Just what do you say? Yeah. What do you say to somebody who's brought you up? And you're seeing them going and you think she's going to go. I know she's going to go and I don't know what to say. I, yeah. I felt just totally useless, yeah. totally useless. Yeah. Afterwards, I can think back with hindsight and think of all the things I should have said to yeah. her. But that's just human. And I think I, I think that that's what the play really highlights is, you know, we're, we're, we're all so human and so flawed. Yes. And um, and I think it'll stay with you. I think I think. Um, it'll make you think about your own family and and how how things how things are either unsaid mm. or said too much or but value them for god's sake yeah, value them yeah. they're only there the once whether you yeah. believe in an afterlife because your, yours is a fairly big theatrical family so yes. you have lots of get to get which i think is fantastic i mean i'm i'm quite jealous i was a big family but as you get a bit older though you start losing people yeah, yeah. but yours is a is, is a big family and you like your your get togethers and your weekends and things we do we do we do like getting together i find i mean my family all together is pretty overwhelming. We're we're quite a noisy bunch, and I'm probably the quieter one of the quieter ones. Right. Um, so I actually I like seeing my family one at a time. <laughs> yeah, they. I think the, you know, there should be a queue. They should all be sitting outside, and they can be brought in one at a time. Yes. No. Um, Too overwhelming. They're, 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 they are they are overwhelming. But what's great is that they're there. Um, you know, my family are very. You know, you can call on them day or night and that's true of every single one of them so yeah. um, they may be a bit bossy but um, they they're incredible we've always been pretty bonded I think it was because my mum my mum died when I was 18 and so the older ones were sort of in loco parentis mm. and and the and I think she was very keen that no matter what we stick together so we have kind mom of done say that, that. Yeah, my mum said to me that. she worried she said you will you will still, still ring your brother won't you I said, of course I will. What, what yeah. do you think? I'm going to stop speaking to him. And that was the thing that worried her. Yeah. She wanted to know as well that we were going to look smart at the funeral. She said, you will dress up. I said, well, you're not going to know, are you? I said, you have to trust me. We will still talk. And we do still talk. Yeah. Because I think it's very important, family. I think families, uh, you know, that's what it's funny. Someone asked me, what, what, what do I think my, be my greatest achievement is? And I, I don't really believe in uh, saying you have a great achievement. But I know that what's brought me the greatest joy is my family. Yes you know both my own little family and my family brothers and sisters because yeah it's great when you when you you know you have those people who get you and even if they don't get you they kind of get you yeah. you know what i mean yeah um yeah family is important uh, your your favorite film i noticed was uh, it's a wonderful life oh yeah i didn't used to like and then i started watching it and now i've seen it god knows how many times i love yeah. anything to do with things like that anything to do with christmas yeah i'm quite happy with I, I i see that as a family film i see and it is a family yeah. film yeah. you know where the family falls apart and then he they get it back together again and it's it's a joyous feeling i like yeah. things yeah. like that and then you get heartbeat which sort of shoves you into everybody's Living room for what was it? Forty nine episodes. Was it forty nine? I don't know. I don't I know how it was many about it was. It was. I think it was, it was a heck a of a three, lot. Three series and then three a couple series. of episodes yeah. to get me out in the fourth. I I loved doing that show. Yeah. Um, mainly because of the people involved. You know, the, uh, I and I love the countryside. I love walking. I love um being out in the open. So, you know, we did half our week. Our ten days filming was up in Gothland in Yorkshire, mm. and I had a little flat up there. And the great thing about I don't know if this happens anymore but the great thing then was that um, we would the, the crew and the cast would all be living in hotels or, or flats together so it was like party time we all went out and had a, a, a great old time and actually David Michaels who's playing um, our lawyer in in ticking. He was in. He was in Harpeet yes. as well. Um, so we were kind of we were talking about. Oh, do you remember? You know, uh, Mark, the the uh, boom operator. You know, there the, there were people that were just great fun. And um, I don't. I I sometimes see Derek. I sometimes, very rarely, see Nick. Um, but we were we were very close yes. at the time, and it was. Um, and for me, it was a, a huge break. I'd I'd been doing theatre for about nine or ten years and mm. I think I'd done one telly in that time and suddenly I was I, I was getting such practice and working with Nick Berry 
he he knew about how to how to work a camera and how to do yes. television and i i learned so much from him yeah um without him really talking about it but he 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 really knew how to do it. So I learned I learned a lot on that job. Well, job did you lose anything through doing Heartbeat? When when you come from from a theatrical background and you do a lot of theatre, you do a couple, little bits of telly, but nothing as big as this. All of a sudden, there are millions of people. Did your life change dramatically the moment they started airing? Not really. I mean, I I I think I mean it's probably different for people who are really really in the public eye but you know it was a very popular series particularly up north you know I'd find when I was doing my shopping you know people would turn around and I remember one woman saying <laughs> turning around to me in Toys R Us I was buying some horrible plastic toy for my son and she turned around and she said it's you isn't it you're you oh, they always say you? that don't they you're it you. is you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but that didn't happen so much in London and I think um yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I think I got the best of it. I, I, you know, I, I, you know, people began to know who I was. There, there was a little bit more chance of getting certain jobs because I'd done yes. a bit of telly. Um, there were also people who, who I think probably thought were a bit snobby about it, you know. So there were probably people who, who wouldn't employ me because I'd done something that was a long running series. You mm. know, it swings and roundabouts. For me, it's been a gift. You know, there's no doubt in my mind yeah. that one of the reasons I got some of the other jobs I got afterwards was because I'd done Heartbeat. But it was it was it was lovely. It was beautifully shot. It was yeah. it was nice. The reason, of course, that nobody said much in London is because we're so blasé about it. We see famous people all the time. We don't yeah. need to say hello to people, you know. Yeah, but yeah. up north, I, I discovered that before when I went uh, out with some people who were very famous up north. Up north, people say it is you, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. Is you. I thought it was. Yeah, you know, and they're very, they're very sweet about it. Yeah. and that's that's the influence that the that the television has. It's that you were talking about the bonding when you were doing it, and everybody, you know, you you become really good friends. It becomes your family. It becomes an extension. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like it's, doing it's, pantomime. It is ve- exactly. Well, I'd say pantomime is very bonding. It's very intense. Yes. You know, and you're away from home um, and you've got a time, you've got pressure of time, a bit like in ticking. There's the pressure of time of the hour that you've got. So you, you, you do, yeah, you make the most of it and you want, everybody wants it to be good. Everybody, want, you know, the people behind the camera want it to be good, the people in front of the camera. You know, it's, it's um, you know, that's the thing about my job, really. Every job I do, um, people are in it because, obviously, because they, they love telling stories. But it's also, you know, they're, they're very, very professional. There are so, they're, it's so competitive now. You know, you do really want to make something that everybody wants to come and see. Mm. You're not blasé about that. And uh, and because it's it's up for viewing, you you know you're exposed. It's very revealing. Hmm. Um, so you might as well give it your best shot. Absolutely, it's been a pleasure, Neve Cusack. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Good luck at the Trafalgar Studio. And Ticking opens, I think, from the sixth of October. They're only in for a five-week run, so you've got to get your skates on for this one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.